Spoilers ahead. Nobody was happy, I'm sure, when Iron Man died towards the end of Avengers Endgame. Are you kidding me? Iron Man is one of the greatest Avengers ever. He's one of the most popular Marvel characters ever. And they killed him off never to return? Wait, there's no way that I believe that Iron Man is dead forevermore. Do you? It's high time, in fact, that he returns to the MCU, and I'd argue that his return has now been forecast, if you will, several different times in the first episode alone of the Disney Plus series She-Hulk Attorney at Law. Don't believe me? We're going to talk about all of that right now. Welcome or welcome back to the Mama Saga, where this Marvel-loving mama is a mother and lawyer by day, but breaks down comic book sagas, movies, and shows like She-Hulk, Attorney at Law by night. Make sure you subscribe to this channel because we're going to do live after party live streams following each episode of She-Hulk, Attorney at Law when they drop. So you don't want to miss out on the fun. All right, so here's the deal. Ultron Easter Egg. Jennifer Walters awakens at the beachfront home of her cousin, Bruce Banner, aka the Hulk, after having undergone the first few transformations into She-Hulk. She walks through the place and encounters an iron faceplate, all scratched and damaged mounted on what appears to be a piece of ocean driftwood. While the first inclination might be to think that it belonged to Iron Man at one point, I believe instead it's actually one of the faceplates belonging to an Ultron sentry, if not Ultron himself. You'll recall from Avengers Age of Ultron that Tony Stark and Bruce Banner worked on Ultron together, where Ultron began as a separate AI construct in the lab, but was then worked into robot body form as part of a peacekeeping program. However, unexpectedly, Ultron went off the reservation, thinking that in order to keep the Earth safe, he should destroy the Avengers and then the human race itself. Whoops. Both Tony and Bruce learned a hard lesson from the whole Ultron experience, and I do think that those men grew and evolved all the more for having gone through it. Now, back in the original Avengers movie, Captain America chided Tony for basically always having a way out. And personally, I think he still had a way out, a backdoor for anything fatal and or world-threatening after the lessons he and Bruce learned together thanks to Avengers Age of Ultron, and that included his having to sacrifice himself as a result of his own snap following Bruce Banner's blip bringing everyone back following Thanos' snap with the Infinity Gauntlet. Did you get that? <laughs> anyway, I'm thinking that this particular Easter egg hints at not only the connection that Tony and Bruce had with respect to meeting and starting their science bromance in Avengers and their lessons learned thanks to Avengers Age of Ultron, and their respective blipping and snapping activity to save the world in the Battle of Earth. Oh no, I honestly do think that these two will encounter each other once more now that the Infinity Saga has wrapped up, phases 1, 2, and 3, and we're well on our way into the Multiverse Saga, phases 4, 5, and 6. Come on, you really think that Tony and Bruce aren't going to be reunited? That Iron Man doesn't return in some form or another thanks to a presence elsewhere in the Multiverse? Or because Tony Stark was smart enough to know he wouldn't likely survive his own snap and had a contingency plan that will let him loop back around into his own universe somehow, some way. I mean, we're talking about Tony embracing the mantra Captain America creates in connection with him, where there's always a way out. Meaning, Tony Stark is an exceedingly intelligent man who's persistently and consistently had a contingency plan to escape certain doom, thinking outside the box that constrains seemingly everyone else in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, preparing for the possibilities and engineering a winning scenario, like creating the ability to operate his suit remotely to save lives on Air Force One, like an Iron Man 2, like creating the Hulkbuster armor as a contingency plan in case Hulk, you know, hulked out? Like creating quick entry functions for his suits so that even if he were surprised, he could gain the protection of Iron Man's armor in a flash. 
This is the guy who somehow didn't prepare for the very real possibility that the six infinity stones would overwhelm him and destroy him for using them? This is the guy who didn't have a way to survive? I don't believe it. Plus, next in this first episode of She-Hulk Attorney at Law, we've got the open loop. An open loop was created in this episode of She-Hulk that needs to be closed. What do I mean? Well, Jennifer Walters goes downstairs into Bruce's lab, which he explains Tony built for him. He used to joke that it was a loner and that one day he'd swing by and take it back. Seriously, I know these lines serve a purpose. They explain where Bruce Banner got the ability to have such a beach house and lab, how he could spend the time in the years following the blip to work on merging his Banner and Hulk persona successfully to create the smart Hulk version of himself, and to establish Bruce as being very lonely following the death of Stark, his friend and fellow science bro. This allows for character development and connection with the Hulk, which is always neat. It causes the audience to feel sympathy for him, especially as he spends a lot of episode one of She-Hulk Attorney at Law, encouraging his cousin Jennifer to stay with him for years and years. And the lines about Tony help to establish why he's so resistant to her wanting to leave and return to her life and go back to work as a lawyer. I mean, you've even got the scene where Bruce shows Jennifer the spot on his bar where he and Tony carved their initials. Could this be any bigger of a romance? <laughs> Come on. And those wistful lines that Bruce speaks about Tony Stark to his cousin Jennifer accomplish all of those tasks, but to me, there's more. I feel like Hela, when she's at Asgard, confronting what's supposed to be a treasure of Odin's. It looks like the Infinity Gauntlet, and yet Hela crows, fake, and she ends up being right, folks. And I know I'm right, too. Tony Stark is coming back. Iron Man is returning to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You mark my words. He's too smart, too capable, and too important as a leader of the Avengers to just sail off into the sunset, dead, and that's that. The void he leaves behind is just too big to be left as is. And the multiverse saga, again, provides the MCU storytellers with a variety of options about how Stark can return to his family, to Pepper, to his daughter Morgan, to, yes, to Bruce, and to the Avengers. But personally, I think that the multiverse version of Iron Man doesn't have to be just some campy or alternate version of himself from another universe. Like we had, say, with... Reed Richards, or frickin' Black Bolt, like we got in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. It can be a version of our Tony Stark, who somehow figured out how to rescue himself from the jaws of permanent death. I mean, just look at Loki, for goodness sakes. Granted, since it's been said that the events of What If are canon, and that means that there are already variants of Tony Stark out there. One died in one episode, but in another episode that will finally debut in season two of What If, it would seem that a variant of Tony Stark and a variant of Gamora work together on the planet Sakaar. Even if Tony's death was an absolute point or an irreversible point, like Christine's death in another timeline, as explored in the episode of What If entitled, What If Doctor Strange Lost His Heart Instead of His Hands?, well, that's just one timeline. I know that Tony Stark, the character of Iron Man, is going to return to the MCU one way or another. And I know that the Sakaar ship that appeared in episode one of She-Hulk clearly relates to Hulk directly, meaning we might be having his son Scar come into play and or the whole World War Hulk storyline come to pass. But I also know that the focus on Tony Stark in this episode means that there's a storyline involving Iron Man. It's going to come to pass, too. Getting back to the open loop theory of mine, there's the concept of Chekhov's gun, which is a dramatic principle suggesting that details within a story or play will contribute to the overall narrative. This encourages writers to not make false promises in their narrative by including extemporaneous details that will not ultimately pay off by the last act, 
chapter or conclusion. There's so many references to Iron Man in this episode alone, directly and indirectly, that exist. And Bruce mentioning that Tony promised that one day he'd swing by and take the lab back is an open loop. I mean it. It is, and that's great news for the MCU, if you ask me. Let me know what you think in the comments below this video. I read my comments, so I can't wait to hear your theories about Iron Man's return, too. Look, you really want to subscribe to my channel and attend my breakdowns of every She-Hulk episode on the days that each one drops, because unlike other hardcore Marvel theorists, I'm the only lawyer, so make sure you join us. Anyway, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok and subscribe to The Mama Saga for more comic book saga breakdowns, Salty Mama style. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you next time.